and we are filming. Welcome to our Comic Con panel. Okay, so we're going to be talking to two great actors today. Uh, we're going to be talking to Chloe Green and um, you might you might have heard of her. Uh, Sam, though, I'm not sure if you've heard of him. Sam Jowett, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> definitely heard of him. And we'll be talking about the work they've been doing on spoof and drama and comedy uh, in the film industry this season, okay, at the festival. Right, hi, welcome. Thanks for, thanks for coming to uh, the Comic Con. Good to see you. So I know that you two are mostly known for your stage work rather than your film work. So this is a new sort of um, area that you've moved into. So tell me about how you found, what's the difference between those two things? Um, I feel like uh, stage acting is very much like the one chance in terms of getting that pure acting to an audience once, whereas TV and film is very much over and over again, cry over and over again to get that specific raw mm. thing that the director actually wants. So you've got more of a chance to get the actual emotion that you're wanting to portray. Do you find that difficult because you have to stop, start, and then try and recreate something? Or? Yeah, I think um, I think with uh, the filming, it's really in the moment almost. So you've got to get that right moment each time, and you've got to make sure that it's correct the first time round. Otherwise. But then again, with film, you have that opportunity to kind of go over it, whereas with, with theatre, you know, you find that you have a, a lot of that time during rehearsal periods to really nail material there, whereas with film, it's very much, right, we're going to do this scene now, you do it, and then that's it, though, really. You don't really get I feel like it's quite much. hard to, like, um, try and recreate the same motion every time to... Um, have multiple options in terms of um, the emotion you're trying to portray. Like, it, like you said, like crying, like over and over again trying to cry is probably like really exhausting. Luckily, we didn't we didn't actually have to fully cry in any of the films that we created. Yeah. But again, like the same thing goes for emotions, trying to be angry and over and over again. It's it's, it's it. quite it's quite uh, it, um, exhausting really um, with film uh, having to you know switch on and off those emotions, whereas with Theatre, you've got kind of a longer kind of process of, of, developing, kind of yeah. developing those characters and those emotions, yeah. Whereas a film, it's kind of very on and off and it's, it's quite exhausting. But. Do you think you can still use the same sort of technique as an acting technique in, in, on film as you can on, on stage? You know, so the same sort of practitioners you might. Um, if you're given a script for a film, can you prepare in the same way as you would on stage think, and use the same technique? But, yeah, in terms of like um, using like Stanislavski in given circumstances, um, in terms of like um, what I think of my character, what other characters think of me, and things like that, you could definitely use that for both theatre yeah, and film. Yeah, you can still use the same uh, character development process. It's just the 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 processes and the, the differences of the length of time that you have to do it is very different. Mm. Uh, but I suppose really it depends how much effort you put into the character yourself because you can spend lots of time. Uh, off screen you know, during a film, going over your, over your lines and going through your character. Um, and it's the same goes for theatre, really. You can still do the same, but you've got a longer process because you've got set days for rehearsals, whereas with film, you don't really have kind of those rehearsal days as such. Not as much as, as theatre, really. I feel like you hear loads of the stories about like actors who. Um, get so induced into induced into a character that they quite hard to get out of it again. Yeah, engrossed, really engrossed. Engrossed with it. Yeah, so that's that, that technique. So if that's if for the sort of film version of Stanislavski, do you know what that's called? Method acting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's what you did in film. The method acting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, all right. So you. You made a series of films yeah. we did. for the festival, mm -hmm. and um, could you tell us a bit, a bit about the, the styles and the, the genres that you've been working on, and the films, and, and you know, then we'll talk about the techniques you used to make them. Well, we initially thought of um, doing spoofs of um, different genres, so we started off by writing all the genres that we wanted to um, film, and then wrote films that we knew that fitted into those genres and then with that we either spoof them or just recreate them in our own way. Um, yeah, so uh, we we uh, we wanted to cover kind of 
uh, generic and um, common, well, well-known common genres that um, most people would have watched. And uh, we wanted to look at um, creating uh, spoofs of uh, well-known movies of those genres. Um, so we, we cover genres um, such as horror, uh, which, uh, do you want to say the one we uh, we did two films for horror, we did Chucky and It. We decided to spoof It in terms of like making it a bit comical. Um, and then we did Chucky as well, which we just straight up just did our own version of, and it wasn't a spoof, it was just our own version of it. Um, we then did other, other genres like teen drama, romance, um, thriller, and things like that. Um, so uh, uh, we, uh, for, for teen drama, we, we um, Focused along uh, the Twilight kind of franchise, uh, kind of summarised uh, the one iconic scene from that, which was um, uh, one of the, the the short kind of clips that we did that was really over exaggerated with the acting styles that they did, and uh, it was one that we really considered an actual spoof because we were still taking it very seriously um, whilst being filmed on camera, and we were still taking it as if it would be a serious film, but however we were over-exaggerating um, their acting styles and to make it kind of that more comedic kind of spoof aspect. That's what we decided to do was watch how they did it and pick up all the things that maybe like remembered from watching it and then we just enhanced them even more in terms of like um, the acting skills of um, Robert Patterson when he plays Edward Cullen. He's very serious and very like monotone and things like that. So we completely took that and over exaggerated it so much that it was to a comedic effect. It and the same thing with like their movements and things like that. We completely over exaggerated them, and I think we've got a good reaction to that in terms of making it funny. Yes. Um, so we also um, covered uh, films uh, uh, for romance, such as Love Actually. Uh, we uh, we did. Um, historical epic, uh, which we chose uh, to do Braveheart for that. Um, and then for Thriller, we also spoke about, um, well, we did speak about, we, um, we did Psycho, um, a classic Hitchcock film. Uh, and this was another one that we uh, uh, kind of chose to spoof um, a lot. Um, the spoof kind of was just myself playing uh, the character of the woman in the shower. and. Really, uh, well, obviously, we've done this. Uh, I feel like in the Hitchcock, Hitchcock, Hitchcock film, we picked up upon the camera angles used, the effects of the camera angles, how like, there doesn't even need to be talking. You could get so much just from what you see. Mm. Um, so, in terms of the camera angles we use, and that, such as um, the sound line on the shower floor, just videoing that, you could just watch that alone and know that they, someone's been murdered in the yeah, shower, and you'd know exactly what's happened. Um, especially with the camera angles that Darcy used for um, portraying what the murderer sees and what the victim sees. Um, it wasn't just like over the shoulder shots, it was also eye shots in terms of what, what they would see. Yeah, it really helps to tell the story for those. Um, so the rest of the, the, the genres that we chose to, to do, we did adventure and for adventure we did uh, um, the Maze Runner um, series, uh, we did um, a black comedy, uh, which we chose to do Ghostbusters. Um, we also did uh, an action, which we did Die Hard, of course. Um, and then we also had an, an 80s uh, John Hughes coming of age movie, which obviously would be Breakfast Club. And then uh, we chose to do uh, Step Brothers as our kind of comedy genre. And uh, most of these films, uh, we chose to kind of shoot uh, shot from shot and kind of not as such remake but kind of take it very seriously and, and kind of gain the kind of essence of what it would be like when it first originally came out. I feel, I feel like when we filmed um, Breakfast Club, it was very much a, with all the other films, we kind of, um, when we weren't on camera, would sit in the eye, eye um, the view for the other character to, for the actor on, on on this film to be able to look at somebody who was actually there, whereas with Breakfast Club we had very much uh, the effect of trying to help the person who was acting by um, already being our characters behind the camera, so still just staying in exactly the same place as we were before, mm -hmm. 
and Darcy would then go around to where we were and as soon as the camera was on us we just act more than we were but when we were behind the camera. Yeah, yeah it, would, it would help kind of really um, get in the moment of what was going on really. Um, we didn't do a film for a musical, we watched um, The High Society. Um, from watching this it was cool because we got to know how, how well I feel when I'm watching a musical it's very much like the situation happens and then the song that occurs after the situation has happened is very much about what's just happened or it very much shows the emotion of the character who's just experienced what has happened um, and as well I feel like all the songs are very well acted in terms of portraying the emotion the character has um, so, and that was really shown in high society I think yeah, it, it differentiates uh, very much from uh, more modern musical uh, movies as well. Because um, High Society is a, is a more uh, classic um, musical film, uh, compared to more modern musical films, which is um, I think they concentrate a lot more on the kind of story aspect of it as well. Whereas the kind of the classic uh, musical movies, I feel, is almost like it's straight from on to being on stage and then transferring it to film, it's very much like you're watching a stage show almost. Um, that's the, all the that's genres. Just, yeah, that's the genres to that we chose to do for, for this okay. festival. So I might come back to that in a separate time about actually detail of genres. But um, at the moment, so what are the, the sort of um, the actual? Being in a film set, being in a studio, like you weren't in a studio, a lot of yours are on location, weren't they, a lot of your films? So, what do the, the techniques you've learned, that, that, or maybe some of the technical terms of, what is it actually like to make a film? What do you actually do? Well, in terms of, we, we all got a chance to act, film, um, direct in, in this process of all the films. And it's very much a, I personally found cam using the camera to film very hard because you've got to get the right angle in terms of thinking of where the character is and what the character sees and things like this. So I, I struggled with that, whereas Darcy found that a lot easier. Um, in terms of directing, I found that fun to do because it was easy to watch the movie that we were remaking and suggest whether we would spoof it or remake it to our own and make it obvious the film we were doing, being able to choose certain parts of the, the film that would make it obvious that we were remaking that one. Um, I found it, in terms of working on different locations, I found it it helped develop my character more because it made it more realistic in the film that we were remaking in terms of like Maze Runner, um, called like Braveheart. Braveheart we did film in a, in a, just a field um, and I found that really helpful because that's how they film it and it was like kind of like character development in a way and the location helps in terms of realis realism. I think, I think, I think um, in terms of the, the acting behind um, these uh, short uh, clips, um, I found it was quite, I found it quite comfortable uh, watching um, someone else doing it and then knowing that I'm kind of remaking these um, techniques. But because we're spoofing it, kind of adding our own kind of gist to the characters and our own kind of take on, on how the characters, you know, think and feel. But I think overall, having that kind of, you know, background of it's already kind of been done before was quite helpful because um, it made the process of, of getting these just done really quickly um, a lot easier. I feel like whilst filming Twilight there was a lot of um, stop start in terms of let's refilm that bit, let's redo that, redo that bit because we knew the, um, we knew what we could get out of the film in terms of what we were capable of doing. Um, so when it came to a certain scene where um, Sam's character jumps from a tree and sniffs my character's hair, we found that really comical and hard to um, remain, not focused, but remain like, straight face with our characters. So by refilming it over and over again, we were able to slowly get rid of that comical side of it for us and completely focus on it. Because the more we focused and made it serious, the funnier it was to the audience watching it. Um, but I personally struggled with having to try and try again with the emotion that I was trying to portray. Yeah, I think that's one thing about uh, the films that you, you kind of uh, uh, develop a kind of struggle for because it's um, constantly 
remaking uh, each kind of emotion and and, um, and trying to get a line perfectly right each time, uh, it could be quite uh, struggling really because it's getting the same line every time. It's for the sake of continuity as well, really. Right, so obviously yours was a much more small scale um, production, so you didn't have the, the clientele, um, maybe the professional clientele that um, that you would have on a big set with all different people. So maybe we can talk further about who does what in a set in, in sort of big production. So well, you spoke, sorry, I was going to say you've spoken to some, a screen yeah. actor, a professional screen actor. Um, what did you pick up about his day on a set? Well, uh, we uh, we spoke to a, as you just said, we spoke to a, a professional screen actor uh, to, to get his uh, input on, on what was going on um, on a set more before we we, we did this project. And um, uh, he showed us an example of uh, what a call sheet would be like and um, some of the processes that would be going on and, and you know who would be doing what. So uh, from looking at a call sheet, we we really saw the kind of the breakdown of each uh, film uh, studio role and you know where they need to be each time. So you know this could include you know where the cinematographers um, needed to be um, and where producers needed to be and the director needed to be and actors of course. But um, we also learned a lot about how like who what they like what their job role was for the studio. So you know the cinematographer talking about they're the ones obviously behind the camera and uh, shooting the cinematography um, and they work uh, they will work closely with the director um, and because the directors will be you know telling the cinematographer his or her vision of how they want the shot to look um, and also uh, we talked about uh, editing and the editors um, and how their progress, their process um, is more kind of after the film is, is finished shooting but they will also be there kind of alongside um, whilst the, the, the film is being made just to make sure that you know it's all kind of meeting up together and it's um, so they will also kind of work closely with like the director and the cinematographer um, but um, is there anything else you want to add on about the film ones? Um, well, for the when the um, professional professional when the profession, professional came, I wasn't um, in the lesson from my back knowledge because um, we were we've been in a short um, film called um, The Last Chances, which was filmed at the Man on the Lake, and from experience of acting in front of a camera. Um, people like the um, boom mic operator and things like that, it's really, um, actually really interesting to see how many people actually, are actually used behind just a simple shot. Like, there were so many shots that we shot, there were so, so many scenes that we shot multiple times just to get the right angles of it, to get the right expressions, mm. and characters in the behind, like extras and things like that. Yeah. And it's so interesting to see, like, because um, we, we could see the director had like a little monitor and they were seeing what the cinematographer was shooting and they were able to say that there's not enough lighting here and then you get the technicians and stuff like that who then put more lighting on that area and it was so interesting to see how that developed. Yeah, it's also kind of uh, seeing how quickly they can, you know, turn it back around again to have it all reset to shoot the scene again. It was kind of, you know, joins back into how the actors feeling in that moment when they're being told, okay, we're going to shoot that again. Um, and and kind of reset those emotions and you know go back to you know saying that line again how it was said before really but so any other sort of on set experience of any other films you've made that you think you know now you start to get on a bit of a flow to talk about what you've seen happen on the set is there anything else you can think of that would be appropriate to talk about now um yeah um whilst working um I I also uh, was in a, a short film um, called um, Bottle of Smoke, and uh, for me, um, being what sort of genre was that? I just forgot to ask. What sort of genre do you think that falls into? Now? The so um, Bottle of Smoke came under the uh, coming of age genre, um, and it's um, for me uh, it was a 
it was the first experience being on a professional kind of set up like a professional film set. So it was interesting to, to be kind of, because I, I was um, playing the lead of the film, um, because it was, it was only a two character based movie um, between uh, the father and the son, and playing the son. And um, it was really interesting to see how everyone else was working around me, uh, whilst I was just this actor just stood there waiting to, to, to say my line really, whilst everything else is going, going on around me, such as, you know, the person on the boom mic and the person on, you know, doing the cinematography and the director and, you know, we had, you know, runners um, making sure that, you know, continuity was correct and stuff and, you know, that hair was always in the right place and stuff and because we had to reshoot a lot of, um, a lot of uh, scenes over and over again, particularly one where I was having to wash dishes. So it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite unusual really thinking that a scene as simple as washing dis dishes um, kind of took so long because I think that was actually probably one of the, the scenes that took the longest to reshoot over and over again because we had to make sure that, you know, dishes were put in the, the right place each time and and being washed at the same circular motion each time. Um, so I think that was kind of a, an experience that uh, really kind of opened my eye to the to what each kind of person does and how important that is when being on film set. Anything that's on your notes you want to cover just in this? Mm, just uh, overall for each genre, um, through acting in them and then re-watching over what we've done and watching the professionals actually do it, um, I certainly picked up on like camera angles used and music used in terms of and like the style of acting used in different genres. So like say like a horror or a thriller, um, I feel like especially in a thriller, the music is so effective in terms of the pace of it. So obviously like when something bad's about to happen, the pace will get faster as if to um, imitate like a heartbeat. Um, and things like say um, a romance that we love actually the songs are much smoother and much more like thoughtful because it's kind of like a, the songs kind of portray the emotion that's there. So I feel like that's what was used in the romance. Mm -hmm. well, I, well, going back to um, horror um, and, and possibly thriller as well, uh, I've recently kind of discovered from, from doing this that, and from looking at uh, other horror movies um, as, a, as a resource, uh, I find that with shots of horror movies, they tend to use quite, uh, shaky canned uh, shots and um, I feel like they almost do this to kind of make the audience really feel like that they're kind of there witnessing what's going on and I think it really helps draw you into the film even more. Um, yeah, like I said, your builds, you know, it feels like you're there almost. But then they could use um, some of the kind of shots for um, other films as well because I feel like you would use um, that type of shot when, when, like I said, you want to draw the audience in more because it feels more at home almost, at home kind of filmed. But um, yes, so uh, we also, for, for genres such as um, action and, and adventure, um, I found that they were, you know, very fully loaded. Um, I feel like with Maze Runner, um, this one was one that um, I had to be the cinematographer for, and there was a scene in which Sam and Darcy, Darcy was running after Sam, and I had to run after them both with the camera. And then watching that back, it was actually really like interesting to see, because when you're watching it, you don't realise that there's actually somebody running with the camera. You just, for me, I don't imagine that. And it was, it was really hard to try and keep the camera steady as well as running at a certain pace where I wouldn't be too fast to be in front of them and too slow to be so behind that I was in the exact same spot the whole run behind Darcy and that I had them both in the same shot at the same time. Like I found that really interesting to do as well as hard to do. Um, and there's different, act, there's different camera techniques yeah, so sometimes definitely. they might run with them holding them so like yeah. a gorilla sort of. And like in, in Psycho we, when Sam was in the shower we had to film from behind the shower um, and Darcy had to get a higher angle 
in which so her iPad wouldn't, her camera wouldn't get wet. So I had to stand in the whole the shower over Darcy so she could get the shower in it and Sam actually getting wet in it um, and not having her get wet in it, which is something that you don't really think about in a film. Like when you see all these different angles of such like intricate scenes and, and even simple scenes and you don't think of the camera person being behind it, you just think of the camera. Well, I certainly don't anyway, and it's so it's so nice to like think about how it's done and how like how much you don't kind of think about how many people is actually behind it and things like that. Okay. Fine. Well, thank you for coming to Comic Con. It's been Absolutely. fascinating. I'm sure we'll talk again because there's some other things I want you to talk about in the later date. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.